Hi everyone, October is brimming with releases and some are stunning out. That's why I made a list of 11 visual novels you should look out for that are coming out this month. So let's get started. The first game on this list is Aquarium. This game is the best kind of partnership you will hope for. Entergram is behind the making of this game and it's featuring the famous VTuber Minato Aqua. The story revolves around a player taking on the role of Aqua's employer in a setting resembling Western Europe. The player falls in love with Aqua, a new maid hiding a secret while serving the amnesiac heir of the noble François family. The protagonist, prompted by family duties, must guide Aqua to practice leadership despite their mutual feelings. Aqua can't fully share her secret, and societal barriers complicate their relationship. The narrative explores their pure love story amid societal opposition, highlighting challenges stemming from their different social statuses. To be honest, I don't find the story very unique, and I don't think we can expect a better one from a visual novel that is mainly an ad for a VTuber, but it's as good as it gets, and maybe it can be a pleasant surprise, and what's more, it's a short novel. The art style is gorgeous, so I don't think the visual side will disappoint the players. Unfortunately, I don't watch VTubers or streamers, uh, so I'm not among the targeted audience, but I will give it a try uh, if it ever gets uh, discounted on some summer sales. It's expected to come out on October 26th on Steam. The next game of this list is Hana Awase. It is developed by Enterg Brain and it's a license that was initially made to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the Otome focused magazine Biz Logs. But it got so popular they made a sequel. There are currently four volumes that have been released across the years in Japan and they will all come out at once for the English release. You'll be able to buy them individually or in a full pack including all volumes. About the story, it is a tale set in Kassen National Academy, where a card game called Kassen is played with Hanafuda cards. In this world, only a select few, known as Kai, can harness the power of the flower, and the most powerful students, the Gokou, are highly esteemed. The story follows a maiden dedicated to these five male students, aspiring to become one of the most revered students in a school known for nurturing individuals with exceptional talents. I think this game contains some gameplay related to cards. I'm not a huge fan of card games, but I can put up with it actually. Even though the premise seems a bit hazy, the art style is very unique. I like the rough quality to it. All volumes combined make for over 80 hours of gameplay, so be prepared for a long story. It will come out on October 26th on Switch and PC. The next game on this list is another Otomi game, even if Tempest, Downing Connections. It's developed by Voltage and was originally set to be released in June 2023, but it's been delayed for unknown reasons. Hopefully, it will be released for good this time. Ushio Ayane, the scenarist and director of this game, is known for her work on Null 9, so I think we can expect great things from it. It tells the story of a young woman who's trapped by time, fate and love. She dies in flames, filled with regret. A witch offers her a second chance, and she returns to life with the firm intention of changing her destiny. But her resolution will only lead her to new misfortunes. The synopsis is quite evasive, but I feel like it will be a dark fantasy of sorts. I like this genre, so I'm personally waiting for this game. I'm also hyped up by the fact that English voices will be available for this game. For those of you who don't know, I prefer to play with English voices when they are available because I find it more immersive to hear characters speaking a language I know. So yeah, I'll pay attention to its release, which is set for October 26th on Switch. Next up is Departed Away. I was quite astonished when I noticed it's made by a Turkish game studio named Hyperon Toren. It's not that common in the visual novel scene. Departed Away is a visual novel where a girl was forced to start at a new school by her work holy mother and creepy father. She was not from an ordinary family and all she wanted was to make new friends. However, things didn't go as planned and she found herself in trouble and she's preparing for a legal battle from what we can see in the demo which you can download and play right after watching this video if you want. There will be interactive 
of phases wherein you can do diverse things. Since the synopsis is mentioning a legal battle, I feel like it can involve some gameplay elements as we see in games like Ace Attorney, but we'll find out at last. There seems to be quite a trend about pixel art visual novels. I think the developers took some inspirations from Needy Streamer Overload and it has a unique quality to it. It is the first game from this game studio, so hopefully it will pan out well for them. No specified release date has been issued, but we know it will come out this month and will be available on Steam, so let's wait and see what it's made of. The next game on this list is a Nochi one, Taimani Asagi. It was released in 2005 in Japan, but it's getting its first English translation. It was developed by Lelif and is the first installment of the Time Amin franchise, which features Bustin Ninja Girls and has a selling point of being short games to complete. The story can be summarized as follows Asagi Igawa, a female ninja trying to leave her ninja life behind, is forced back into it when a monster seeks revenge on her. Her younger sister is also caught up in the mess. The game is said to have a steamy content. I don't think we should be expecting too much from the scenario, as it's kind of in the nature of this type of games, but well, if you want to relax while completing a title in one sitting, this game could be the ideal fit for you. Time Amin Asagi is set to be released on October 28th and will be available on Steam. The next game is Pretty Overseer. A Kickstarter funded visual novel developed by Russian indie game studio Flaming Firefly. It's their third game and appears to be an upgrade over their previous titles. The synopsis is as follows. As a young lieutenant in a closed military academy for magically talented individuals, you must maintain order and train recruits under the supervision of your mistress, Neoma. However, your subordinates' outstanding magical abilities exceed your own and they tend to lose control of their magic in times of stress, you must be extremely careful, will you have time for privacy and romance, or will you blindly obey the witch? I'm not used to military visual novels, so I think it could be refreshing to experience one, for a change. I find the premise intriguing, and I think it could have some surprises in store. I also think it could be a pleasant title to play between two major games in my backlog, and I find the art to be of high quality for an indie game. Pretty Overseer sounds like an interesting and unique visual novel. I'm excited to see what it has to offer when it's released this month. I wish Flaming Firefly the best of luck with the release of their game. The next game is a Sweetcore Bruise. Sweetcore Bruise is another Kickstarter funded visual novel developed by American game company Nochi Studio. It's an otomi game that follows the story of Millie Brief, a new apprentice at Sweetcore Bruise, a magical tea shop who dreams of becoming a master tea crafter. The game features a Candy Crush like gameplay system, and the story revolves around Millie's aspirations and romantic pursuits. She catches the attention of two suitors Zero, a popular idol astrologer, and Rain Kinsley, a prestigious curse breaker. The setting of the game is quite unique, with a mix of fantasy and tea related elements. The game is expected to be a tender and relaxing story, perfect for winding down at the end of the day. Voice acting will also be included in the game, which is a nice touch. No release date has been announced yet, but the game is expected to release this month on Mac and Windows. I'm excited for the release of Sweet Skull Bruise, as it sounds like a unique and heartwarming Otomi game. I'm also interested in the Candy Crush-like gameplay system, as it could add a fun and challenging element to the game, so let's wait for it. The next game on this list is Sequest Opera. It's a Chinese game that will be released in Chinese, Japanese and English. It's set in the countryside in the 80s to 90s and it allows players to experience rural drama and explore the murders that took place on the stage of a drama show. Players can experience the rural drama and investigate a series of mysterious murders on the stage connected to the source of opera and a mysterious ceremony. The game has a unique art style reminiscent of games like Okami or movies like The Tale of Princess Kaguya which draw the graphic inspiration from traditional Chinese and Japanese art. I love this art style and I plan to buy it on its release. I'm very excited about the fact that it will feature Chinese voice acting, which is a good selling point for me as a Mandarin learner. Secret Opera is expected to be released any day this month, so I'm keeping my eyes on its release. Next up is Inescapable. 
Inescapable is from Dreamloop, a Finnish game studio that mainly worked on the technical aspects of various games in the past, such as Layers of Fear 2 and Imp of the Sun. This is their second video game after the critically acclaimed Stardust Galaxy Warriors Stellar Climax. Inescapable is a social thriller about a group of contestants who are kidnapped and forced to participate in a twisted reality TV show on a tropical island. The contestants are told they will receive $500,000 if they can survive to the end. But there's a catch. There are no rules and no escape. The show explores human nature and how far people are willing to go for their own desires. It is the first time I've seen a game with this kind of premise and I like it quite a lot as it can offer tense moments and good plot twists. The art style looks good. What I like about western visual novels is that the character designs tend to be more based on people from this part of the world and it's easier to physically relate to them. I'm not sure if this is the case for every western game but I think it can set them apart from their Asian counterparts. This game reminds me of the Danganronpa series by its flat character display and 3D environments and it's even slightly similar in terms of gameplay as you will have to navigate from place to place to talk to people in order to advance the story. It even features English voices so I buy it with pleasure. It's expected to come out on October 19th on PS4, Xbox One, PC and Switch. Let's show the developers that they can invest in visual novels by supporting their work. Next is Libra of the Vampire Princess. Yes, this game has already been released in the West by the publisher Minkanji Japan back in 2017, but a revisited translation will be published due to the complaints from the players about the quality of translation for the root of a character. If you didn't know this game before, it's from the studio Onomatopi and it tells the story of Kusanagi Shuma, an ordinary boy who was abducted by a vampire Iris Pumila, who revealed to him that he has a vampire progenitor's blood. Shuma escaped but became a half vampire with superhuman strength and vampire's vitality, as well as spontaneous vampiric impulses. He will then meet several girls and form bonds with them as he discovers his vampire abilities. The plot is a bit mundane, but the art style is good and I think you can draw some enjoyment from it. It's not my type of games, so it will be a skip for me, but some people are likely to like this game, hence its presence in this list. The new translation will come out on October 31st, so let's hope for a better quality of transition this time around. The next game on this list is Archetype Arkadja. A game from a partnership between Water Phoenix and Kemco. It's set in a world where disease called the Pecato Mania causes people to harm themselves and others. Rust logs in to the full dive online game Archetype Arcadia to save his sister Christine who has been afflicted with the disease. In this game, players convert their memories into avatars and fight. It's a game of hope, grief, joy, betrayal and inescapable death. I love the art style and character designs, especially those of Rust and Christine. I'm also really interested by the synopsis as I really like stories that revolve around video games and virtual worlds. It can of reminds me of Axel World with its avatar fights in a virtual world. I think I'll add it to my backlog and play it when I have the time because it's a really long visual novel that can be completed in around 50 hours. It's expected to release on October 24th on PS4 and Switch. Hopefully it will get a PC release later. At last, let's finish with Ginka. Developed by France Wing, Ginka has some famous people that work on it. The scenarist Kono Hasta has worked on If My Heart Had Wings, and the artist Yusano has worked on A3 My Dear Moments, so I'm really hyped up because those games I just mentioned are extremely good games. The story is about Aoba Ryusei, a guy whose childhood friend named Ginka disappeared on the night of the summer festival five years ago. Now, a high school student, Ryusei returns to Himejama Island to find out what happened to her. He discovers that Ginka is still missing, but he then has a mysterious reunion with her. She looks the same as she did when she disappeared, and she only remembers Yusei and her feelings for him. Yusei is confused while well, she still looks so young, but he's grateful to have her back, and they spend a summer vacation together on this island. The promise isn't mind-blowing, but from my experience with front-wing games, I know we can expect masterpieces from them, even with basic concepts like friends reunions. The CGs are gorgeous, and the character designs 
games, even though they are limited, are good enough, I don't think this game's length will be long, as there seem to be only two characters in this novel, but we'll find out when the game releases. Its release date is set on October 26th. Damn, there will be quite a lot of games that will release that same day. It will be available on Steam. Did any game in this list pick your interest? I wanted to thank you for the first milestone of 30 subs on this channel. Let's do our best to keep it growing. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe and tell me in the comment section down below which game you are waiting to be released this month. Thank you for watching and have a great day.